Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Well, I think it's pretty nice to be here right now. I'm sure a lot of people thought they were actually getting a power play episode, but nah, nah, not tonight. Matter of fact, I was going ahead and planning this out. We were going to go ahead and give them a hidden surprise episode for right now. And you know what? I got a lot of ground to cover because I didn't do J360 Radio last week. So I think we're going to go ahead and hop in on this because welcome to the J-Man Show here on J360 Radio. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Woo! Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Hello, J360 Legion, and welcome to the J-Man Show, here for episode 238, and I'm your host, J-Man, of course. You know, we haven't been gone that long, ladies and gentlemen. I just went on a whole different medium and on a whole different series. But other than that, though, I haven't thought any less of you, and for those of you that did follow me to J360 TV, thank you. Your support means a lot. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, let's talk about support, shall we? Let's really talk about it. (laughs) Man, look. Isn't that cute how everybody's withdrawing their music from Spotify due to Joe Rogan and his misinformation? Hmm, yes, yes, yes. Because, you know, we talk about vaccines, we talk about trying to take down Omicron, we talk about, well, not even Omicron, we go all the way back to its ancestor, original COVID. You know what I mean? The good stuff. Yeah, the one that got us all into this crap, and now everybody's trying to figure out where do we go from here? Are we actually making it to the top or are we not? So Joe Rogan gives some misinformation about he's not an expert at this, folks. I mean, damn, he's not an expert. Stop looking at this guy to be a big expert. Do you know who Joe Rogan is? Really? Like before the whole Spotify, the whole Joe Rogan, the greatest podcast of all time and all that other nonsense that you guys throw around to celebrities and stuff. Do you know who he is? You know, he was a former um, MMA practicer. I think he still practices, though. But he was a former MMA c- a practicer, and then he was a stand-up comedian for a while. And then he was on two lackluster seasons of The Man Show that he hosted with Doug Stanhope, of all people. Which, at the same time, I don't think Doug Stanhope is that bad. But at the same time, he's pretty much relevant because I just mentioned him right now. So shout out to you, brother. But the thing about it is, is this. He's always been... And the whole comic scale and stuff like that. And then the people that he has on there, you know, he was also in Zookeeper, wasn't he, with Kevin James? Yeah, he's up there as a celebrity. So as you guys look at, like, this whole thing, I don't know why you expect, like, just because they're the host of a show that they're experts on these kind of things. He's not. Like, you know, you really realize this. They spent, what, a million dollars for his show, Spotify did, to affiliate and syndicate him? He's a big deal for him, I guess. But then again, you know Spotify has some skeletons in the closet too. So as I see people withdraw from Spotify if they're not battling NFTs, which once again is a source for another episode because I'm still looking at how this nonsense is going. And it's it's got negative complications with it too. 
much like anything else around here does. But I just look at all this stuff about Joe Rogan's podcast and all these musicians coming up to withdraw their music from Spotify. Oh, yeah. Sure, that'll show them. Mm -hmm. That'll really show them, you know? Because it wasn't just one. It was more and more people. Now, India Iris, she's on this whole thing, uh, exploiting Joe Rogan for... um, saying the N-word and all the other negative things that he's done, which he has done, by the way. But you, you have to also realize this, right? I'm not giving him a pass, but the black community gave him a pass. I'm not giving him a pass on too much of anything, but a lot of people gave him passes to go do this kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? Which is why he feels as though he's comfortable and allowed to do these things. But he also came out with a video where he apologized and he said, you know, that he's going to do better next time and all that stuff. But you see, the thing is, I severely doubt it. Because, you see, he got one thing out of everybody that a lot of people tend to forget when it comes to celebrities and the stuff they do. Which is similar to the stuff that we of the indie crowd and other people in the common folks territory does. He got attention. He managed to get so much out of this. If there's one thing that Eric Bischoff taught a lot of people who watch WCW... Controversy builds cash, okay? So by going about doing that stuff, his numbers probably escalate to the point where they won't plateau at all because he done made his money from all this. Spotify probably made money from all this too. So if you're like one of those musicians that are renowned in some way, you're not renowned in his way anymore. And not only that, though, I I just find it amazing. See, when the monster eats itself, I laugh all the time because, like, you know, once again, these are people that you hold on pedestals. You understand what I'm saying? We you hold them on pedestals, like, they can't be reached, they can't be taken down. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I'm a little biased because I'm a podcast host myself and I own my own business, but at the same time, I, I looked at the show and I listened to the show. And I see nothing of interest outside of what I do on J360 Hangouts. You get what I'm saying? Except that he can pull people like Musk. He can pull people like Bezos. He can pull people because he's in that bracket. You understand what I'm saying? See, people usually hang out with and identify with such that they have a kin or a familiarity to. So, yeah, millionaires hanging out with millionaires? No kidding! Yeah, things like that. It's just like, it's just a lot of y'all come up out of the woodwork with this stuff because this goes back on the U2. Not the J360 Legion. I love y'all. Y'all been supportive for a while, but I'm talking about like, oh, you know, the average person out there, the person that thinks, oh, yeah, that's making it. No, 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 no. Should I, should I start a podcast? The question is, do you want to? And if you do start a podcast, don't go to Joe Rogan route. That's like the most easiest damn thing. It ain't no different than like when um, Howard Stern's floating around. He's still around, by the way. But then there's like when Don Imus was around, like the shock jock way of doing stuff. You know, that inspired me too. I'm not, I'm not going to say it hasn't. But what I'm saying is, is that, you know, once again, you're giving a lot of comedian, a lot of uh, burnt out comedians that renewed success. And some of them are due for it because they're on podcasts and they go ahead and they tell you all these things. And there's so many podcasts. There's so many podcasts all over the place. And everybody's thinking that, oh, well, I don't know if I'll ever get any reach and stuff like that. Maybe for your first show, you probably won't. But at the end of the damn day, if you go and buy a Yeti and you think you're going to automatically get all of that stuff, that's a pipe dream at best. Here's the thing. It's like going to the gym, okay? When you go to the gym, what what are you trying to do? You're trying to make your body and your spirit and everything else better, right? Isn't it the whole point of you going to the gym and not just going on there and showing everybody what a big ass you got on, like, Snapchat and all that jazz? Think about it. Like, you can tell the ones that are working out because they're too damn busy to ever be on no friggin' social media. But the ones that are... Oh, yeah, I'm really getting my workout in. I'm really doing it for posterity and everything else. Oh, yeah, you know, the boyfriend with skills in the back holding the camera. I'm like, yeah, yeah, get it, girl. This is the way we're going to pay for our trip to Aruba. And you know what? When it happens and you invested in that, don't get mad about it because that's you being stupid with your money. If you go ahead and you invest in dirtbag people like Joe Rogan, you're going to get a dirtbag return on interest, much like anything else. You want to know how you really stop people like that? Or like jerks on YouTube and all. Unsubscribe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like like when a lot of y'all are saying, oh yeah, well, well, gee, that's the big thing for the withdrawal. No. These people are withdrawing, and at the same time, they're still making news headlines because they're withdrawing. This is how you do it. Just unfollow them. Just go ahead and just, and don't even try to talk to them anymore. You know what I'm saying? Don't engage and all that kind of stuff. That's all there is to it. You can simply just not watch the damn Joe Rogan show. 
I don't watch his. I watch his show about as much as I watch. Um, who's the other burnout that's on there that, that just pretty much ruined what he had going good and stuff like that? Budden, yeah, yeah. I don't respond to his show either because you know at the end of the day, it's no different than what I do here. The thing is, they got more clout behind them right now. Mine's are still going. They're still trying to reach and capture that new element, but I'm still going. And you see, much like how other people jump in with their whole thing, like, these dudes not need to quit making these podcasts. No, shut up, biatch. I'm going to tell you what. We need to keep making podcasts because we're going around here and we're digging for nuggets of truth or bringing a conversation to light that you never thought you could have. We're doing it right. But the thing about it is you got to be mature enough to take it. And a lot of people are not mature enough to take any of the stuff that goes down. And I know, like, you know, where I am on different things. I know where I am every time. Because every time J360 Radio or J360 TV does something, I'm at the forefront of it. I can't have a sick day. I will chug some NyQuil and I'll go as far as I can go until I got to go out. But that's about right. You see what I mean? Because that's responsibility of things. But you see, the thing is, when you see all that withdrawal and all that stuff right there... Remember, freedom of choice is very important. Y'all talk about your freedoms all the time. You talk about, like, how freedom's being taken away from us left and right. I mean, hell, Black Lives Matter is starting to pop back up again, you know, on the forefront because of what happened with the no-knock warrant. But that's something else I'm going to have to cover for another episode because I really hate, you know, I really hate the idea of a no-knock warrant is being around and people didn't learn nothing over the last few years. You understand what I'm saying? Even with this Omicron stuff. And yeah, we're talking about vaccinations. Are vaccinations really solving anything? Are vaccinations really, really changing the tide? It's little things like that. But you know, you're going to have to dig deep to really get the information that's really, really honest. Because after a while, there's so much misinformation. And you knew this crap when everybody started doing TikTok videos. But, but you know, as usual, oh, if a celebrity tells it, it must be true. Wrong. Wrong. Don't even try it. You got to do your own research. If you want to be, oh, I own my own life. I'm in control. Of Eddie. I don't think so. Some of y'all are still mad about Facebook for various reasons. Some of y'all are surprised about Facebook for various reasons. Oh my God, we're going into the metaverse. Let's take care of this universe first, jackass. You ever think about that? Let's go on ahead and work on getting some real money instead of worrying about crypto and NFTs and all that jazz. Well, gee, that is real money. Shut up, damn it. You know what I mean. The point is, is that sometimes you guys nosedive and all this stuff because, hey, it worked out for celebrities. Stop doing that. You know what I'm saying? You really got to look at this stuff, not at face value. You got to go deep into it. And then you'll realize a lot of the, why do all these great celebrities try to go into things that you and I do? You know, from the YouTubing, the vlogging and everything else. Like, why do they try to do what we do? Because ain't nobody hiring them in the studio system anymore. And you know what? That's the only way they're ever going to be prevalent again. And I've been mad ever since about this kind of crap because when Zach Braff made that piece of crap movie, after he got all that money from Kickstarter, celebrities just come in and they got clout and they got all those connections to come right in and just ruin stuff and rip it from the indie crowd. It's just like how The Weeknd, oh yeah, The Weeknd's a great musician, all right? Yeah, he was a great musician for that first album, but everything else though, hmm, some of that stuff starts to sound like some of my Synthwave buddies' music. You understand what I'm saying? And I host Jam, so you can't take that from me. You think about it. Listen to that stuff back and back. If anything, I think he owes some people some coin. I really do. But a lot of y'all out here that hold a hold a candle for these people and go ahead on pedestal and say they can do no wrong, oh, man, you either, A, just got in the game, or you really hooked on stupid, or you just blue-pilled to death. The point is, is pay attention to all this stuff around you. Ask questions. And while we're on the subject here, never meet your heroes. Like some of the most prominent podcasters, I am not going to meet them because I'm going to tell you why. I'll tell you why right off the bat. I don't have time to be disappointed like that in that regard. I'm already disappointed enough in some people in the Jam Fam for certain things. Do you understand? I am working on all this stuff on my own. Whereas I go look for my tribe and I go ahead and I build a team. And then there are times where, you know, the person that's supposed to be helping me out with these shows, he gets sick or he gets caught up in life. And I look at him like, damn it, son, take responsibility for the crap that you're supposed to do. That's all I got to say about it. Because for me, myself, if it happens to me, ain't nobody going to pick my black ass up to go handle it. I got to do it. You get my drift? It's just like, for those of you budding podcasters out there, or those that you have found the show, hi, I'm J-Man. But the point is, is this. You find this show and everything, it's to teach you how to do this stuff. 
You know what I mean? Stay on the speed. Like, at the end of the day, don't worry about being famous. Don't worry about all that crap. Have fun doing this work. It's just like when I'm doing the power play and stuff, people are like, oh, you're doing a video game show. Yeah, no crap, Jack. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? No kidding. I know it. I'm sitting right there playing it. And I gave you a whole week of it. You know? I did all that stuff because it needed to be done. That show needed some tender love and care. Let's just be honest. And I love doing that series. I'm never not going to do the Power Play series. It's a big cornerstone of J360 TV, just like the J-Man show is for J360 Radio. That's just the way it is. But you see, some people forget, you know? And I just look at it from time to time, and I'm like, hey, I'm doing this for those that want to watch it. And if you want to watch it, good. That show's for you. Just like when you listen to the J-Man show and I'm talking about all this stuff going down, that's one for you. The only problem is with that marathon was I did it without giving you a mini bite, so I didn't call home at this time because I really wanted to see how this experiment was going. And it did. You see, because for a while there, the YouTube views weren't coming in like anything. But as kept going, kept going, and not focusing on like, oh yeah, am I going to get that Lambo or whatever? Nah. The numbers were going up because it was being used. You see what I'm saying? So that's what it's like, man. You worry about all this kind of stuff. You go ahead and you feed into this BS. Oh, yeah. You know, I like seeing celebrities fight celebrities because at the end of the damn day, there ain't no problem being solved with none of that. Actually, didn't somebody try to go at Cardi B and Cardi B sued the living life out of him? And now they got to pay him that money in addition to apologizing profusely? What was her name? Casa T or something like that? All because she wanted attention. That's how, you know, that's the number one thing about all this stuff, right? It's really just attention getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just go for the attention. You know what I mean? Yeah, ride the waves of attention, but you'll never, ever, ever get that sweet oasis of respect. See, the thing about it is with me, yeah, sure, it could be attention. But no, you'll respect me at the end of all this stuff. As you go through the five stages of grief, whether it's denial or whether you get to acceptance, I'll be right there, either me or my avatar, smiling at your ass because you know I was right. And you see, at the end of the day, you try to blackball people or you try to silence people who bring up a good counter argument about this stuff. Or you go ahead and you just try to say, like, you know what? Um, yeah, yeah uh, uh, well, you know, I, I have a third uh, uh, option to all this. Ah, eh, shut up. I'm sure it's good, but do it on your own time. And, you know, which is why, like, sometimes when I do the SOTA pod, I look at this kind of stuff and I like that show. That's not a bad show, but that last episode, I'll be honest with you, really left a sour taste in my mouth. Because you know what? It was ridiculous. I didn't even like the way I act. See, I always look at myself, but I did not like the way I was going across. Because you know what? I know I can go across better than that. And I unfortunately said I hate new Star Wars. Now, see, let me rephrase on that. I hate how new Star Wars is. I do not like the way Lucasfilms as a production company is being ran these days. I do not like the whole idea that the future or the force is female when the future and the force is for everybody. I do not like the idea that Kathleen Kennedy is in charge of something obviously over her head with it, when at the same time you realize that the shows that are taking are the ones that are not buying in that woke BS. Do you understand? The High Republic's failing, but... Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett, depending on who you talk to and how it's being looked at, are doing just fine. The series are doing great. And no, I did not like how the damn sequel trilogy went out. Because it could have been a lot better than what it was. Do you understand? That's what I mean by why I hate new Star Wars. I don't hate the characters. I don't hate any of the stuff that was being told regarding even the prequels. The prequels are a lot better than that. And Clone Wars really helped out with that uh, characterization. But at the end of the damn day, though, I just look at this kind of stuff and I'm like, these people are sitting here coasting on their laurels, coasting on their resume and all these things instead of just giving us what we want. And you know what? We're starting to get in those series. But the thing about it is it took us a while to get there, didn't it? You know what I mean? Like how everybody talks about how great of a film RoboCop is. And RoboCop is a great film. Don't get me wrong. It is. But you see, the thing is, what is the icon of today? What is the, you know, without the Marvel label on it, what is the icon of today? What is that action hero that, that you know, all those kind of things that, that really have a standing, you know, that's really cementing anything? I guess John Wick would be. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he would be. But you see, the thing about it is that that's one. We need more than that, don't we? 
And I always look at this, even when I do the SOTA pod or even when I do hangouts. Can I do better? Can I do just as good? Is it my time to go ahead and make some work? And then at the end of the day, am I just going to sit here and criticize and go ahead and critique all this other stuff? Well, then where's my stuff? Well, guess what? My stuff's coming. It's right here. Matter of fact, I'll fire up Final Draft and I'll go ahead and do it live on the show sometime. But the point is, is this, right? We got to put up or shut up too. We of the indie game can't get as lazy as our bastard cousins over there in the studio side. You understand what I'm saying? They over there with blow and all sorts of fentanyl on their systems. They don't know what the hell tomorrow, today or tomorrow is. They probably think today's still Saturday. And we all know it isn't. So it's just a little crap like that. That's, that's what I think, man. And then I see like people, oh yeah, if things don't go my way, oh, I got to withdraw, oh, I got to run away, I got to get away from that, I got to do all... You know what? Look, in terms of mental health, if you got to get away, yeah. But then there are times where you got to realize this, right? We got to be stronger than our ailments. We got to be much more than what demons take over us. We got to be a little bit more than what our emotions can be sometimes. You know what I mean? Like right now, yeah, it seems like I'm angry. But you see, the thing about it is, is that I do something with my anger. You understand? And I'm more than it. It's gotten me into and gotten me out of a lot of stuff. And the same could be said for a lot of people out here. We could do better, you know? Oh, no, you worry about COVID. You worry about this and that. You got, you know, unfortunate circumstances coming in your way. You got things coming from you left to right. Well, look at it like I do. Like you're in a huge boxing match and you got your friends that are supposed to be on your side anyway but the thing is they'll disagree with you on the slightest little thing so they might as well be enemies at this point point. and then you got like other people that didn't like you in the beginning trying to lump in with them so they're all fighting you so it's like this if it's like me against everybody and i know alan's sitting in the corner somewhere because y'all got to him early but the thing about it is it's like if it's me fighting against everybody well guess what i'm either standing right there with a sphere in one hand or i got like a friggin <laughs> friggin set of nunchucks in the other one and i'm just like let's do this bitch You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm ready to fight everybody. It gets to that point sometime. And the thing is, I ain't withdrawing from nothing. Whether you try to cancel me or not, you can't do it. The only one that can cancel me is me. The only one that can stop me is me. The only one that can put me down about things like that would be me. And you know what? Y'all could do it with my permission, and that's how the mind works. You see what I'm saying? But at the end of the damn day, I'm ready to fight through all of this. I'm ready to make some features, not shorts, features. These things need to be made to tell the stories that need to be told. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all want to talk about representation matters. Well, hey, guess what? Let's go in arms and let's go ahead and take the system back then. But you don't want to do that because it's actual work. Oh, yeah, I want to see what my views and likes are this week. Yeah, and then here's me telling you to choke on this. And then there's the sign of my middle finger right there in front of you. Because you didn't help out with the project right then and there. You withdrawed. My mental health. Oh, where am I at as a person? All that kind of stuff. You got to make progress. And dare I say it, but you see, unlike what certain people around here tell you, it's not all pleasure. You got to climb up and you got to actually do it. Matter of fact, it's going to take a lot more resistance because that's what we're used to. So you're going to have to really, really work on it. The road to recovery is a lot harder than the road to just doing nothing. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm sure some of you get it. But the whole thing is, like, I'm looking at us in the indie crowd. Okay, yeah, yeah, celebrities came in. Like I said, they utilize crowdfunding. So we got to compete with that. Oh, you know, they come in and they utilize all these other things and they try to tell you to sign up for their service. And, you know, if their service tanks, they'll go ahead and take the money and bail out. And then you're left there holding the bag and stuff because you invested in them and their pipe dream. You're going to have to understand that that's a risk. And risk aversion is a lot more expensive than actually going and taking risk. You know? Think about all the jumps I'm trying to do. And then again, I ain't trying. I am doing it. There ain't no tries in this stuff anymore. This is doing it. I just look at people, man. I I just look at them to high, and and I can just see their actions. I can see people bailing out on me every time I do this series. But when it's jams time, oh yeah, we all up in the club. We all family now. Shut up. If you're not there during the bad days, I don't want to see you during the good days. If you're not here during the rain and storm, I don't want to see you in the sun and shine. But I do want to see a sunset where I just go ahead and totally own you about that. And you see, the thing is, I say that for those that don't have my respect. 
And I say that for those who probably definitely don't respect me because I'm still smiling and having a good time. But when I see the whole thing about this Rogan and this, 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 or any of these major great podcasters, really because they're just riding that dead horse and y'all are following it, I just look at it like, well, you know what? Luck's starting to run out. Things are starting to go a little different of a way. Or at the end of the day, you know, you resurrect that career because you gave them all that attention and all that good press, and then, like, they bounce right back up. That's how you did it. But when it comes to somebody else that's out there in the indie game wanting to do something about it, oh, you're going to laugh, you're going to mock them, you're going to try to cut them down, and you'll be like, oh, you know, you should try to be like this. Or blah, blah, blah. No, I don't think so. You don't give me any suggestions if you're over there trying to mock me down. And that goes for any of you out there who are in the indie game, who got burnt out and got tired of it. But the one thing I didn't tell you about the Power Play series when I was actually doing it for these past couple of days, I had fun. I was having fun. I fell back in love with the process because I was having fun doing it. You see what I'm saying? And the same thing goes for, like, the J-Man show. I love this damn series. I have a lot of fun doing it. You want to know why the Cyclone got canceled at 40 episodes? Because I didn't have fun doing that damn show anymore. Except for that one night only we did. Because everything got together like the way it was supposed to. With no misses on a beat. And even then, Lucifer wasn't even there during the early days of the Cyclone. But he might as well have been there because he was so good. And I hope that dude goes as far as he needs to go. Because he's way too talented for any of the stuff that he goes through. Good dude. Respect that dude. Same thing with Alan. That's why I always stay on him about stuff. I'm like, yeah, you're too good for that crap. And as for me, well, yeah, I'm still here till I go. Still here till I uh, (laughs) take that long last nap. But by that time, though, you should have enjoyed me while I was here. You understand? Oh, before any of y'all bring up... um, Certain important matters of the heart, that's still going strong too. I'm just letting you know that. <laughs> nah, that's still that's still good. But like right out right off the bat, it's still a part of me. So like I said, if I'm all good, I'm all good. You understand? And then we got episode 41 coming for jam soon. And I'm looking to see not only the people that have been there throughout the whole run of that show, even during like moments where like I really get at people in the community at large and you're still there. Well, that just means that, guess what? There's the respect I'm talking about. You understand what I'm saying? You've been there. You saw the growth in everything. That's why it was enjoyable. And that show's not stopping anytime soon. But things might change because some people, unless it, uh, when when I get triggered or my narrative comes into play, now there's a problem. You see what I'm saying? And I ain't afraid for that. I ain't afraid for a lot of things because, like I say, you know, when it's like me versus everybody... Yeah. Yeah. And believe me, I'm the one that shows up at the battlefield early because I already got my strategy in play. And that's just how it goes. Even now, as we do this, because you can think of this as a bonus episode for your whole Valentine's weekend thing, because I got a lot to go at with those people that sit there and play the hopeless romantic excuse all the time. But that's the source for another episode. But like I say this, though, going back into the main story of all this stuff... It's always interesting to see celebrities go at celebrities. It's always interesting to see how far people will try to run with celebrities because they don't take control of their own lives. Or it's always amazing to see like how somebody would be like, oh, you know, th- th- free Britney and all that stuff. And yeah, it's good that Britney got out of that conserv- you know, conservatorship because that whole thing was weird. But, you know, everything else, though, with her fighting with her sister, I could care less about. I really could. And not only that, they should handle that family squabbling in private. But a lot of people will sit there and run with that stuff. Like, oh, you know, uh, I didn't know about it. It's just as bad as the whole Kim Kardashian and um, Pete Davidson relationship and stuff. Who really gives a damn who he's dating? He's out there dating. You're not. With the cobwebs in your cooch and all that kind of stuff. And all the other nasty things about you that people probably looked at and didn't give you a shot on. Because guess what? That's something you're going to have to work on. You understand what I'm saying? Or those of you out here that can't even keep a man or a woman or any of that stuff. Yeah, I'm talking to y'all. Uh-huh. Because of varying reasons. 
And no, I'm not talking about abuse either. You know what I mean? Because that's a problem. And the thing is, there's no respect for people like that, not in the school of J-Man. And if I ever see it, well, you ain't coming back in no sequel, are you? Now, the point is, like, when I think about it, man, I, I just look at us. We, we could be a lot more and a lot better than what we are. But people, they'll, they'll look at what the way the thing is, they'll see it as a burden, or they'll become apathetic, or, you know, oh, I'll just, I'll just tolerate this. You get what I'm saying? Life's too short anyway. Oh, yeah, that's another damn thing. When people die, okay, you gotta look at it like this. Some of those people, when they die... Life was probably held to them. And now that they've moved on from this, hope that they end up in a better place so that, you know, at the end of the day, they won't have to go through this stuff or what they have went through on such a degree ever again. You know? Think about it. I sit there for a little bit and I think about, like, some of those people that make it to their 70s, 80s, and 90s. They live full lives. Here at 30, still trying to climb up that mountain. And wonder if this is it or not. The, 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 the weight of burning out and leaving this whole thing behind. Grow strong because of the way of what is around you in your environment. But yeah, when somebody that, that went through a whole different lifetimes and periods of things. When they go on, oh yeah, that's the time to be like, yeah, rest of power. What about your power? What about you? Where do you see yourself in, in the next few years, huh? Still at the same spot? Living with your parents? Using uh, plastic devices to get some excitement and some action because that's as far as you can go? Yeah. What about you? Think about it sometimes. Still working at that McDonald's? Even though McDonald's is a job, so don't throw too much shade at it. Still a job, but that's not the end-all be-all for some of y'all out there. Or you could go ahead and Worry about Joe Rogan and where his financial situation is and where he going to be at. Because let's just be honest, this thing happened what? Like the deal really went into play either 2019 or 2020. And then as it went into play for like 2019 and 2020, you got to figure that that man's got a nest egg and all sorts of royalties and stuff probably save up to the point where if he loses this show, that's okay. He'll go find some other place to go to and they'll bank on that too. Or guess what? He may never ever have to work again. But you gave a damn, right? Think about it. And then when it comes to certain people in the indie crowd and stuff like that, you don't have to necessarily give them money. You can support by using traditional word of mouth and go ahead and say, <laughs> let somebody that needs something to listen to who probably has the money that could help be supportive or anything and help them grow. A long time ago, it used to be about like growth, planting seeds. But y'all want instant gratification. You don't even take the time for patience anymore. And you don't even look at this stuff like outside of face value. Oh, I, I, I read the headline, but you didn't read the article, right? You're on Instagram. You, you saw the picture, but you didn't read the caption, right? Which, by the way, Instagram is a whole much like Twitter's a whole, and much like uh, any of these other things are. But you see, the thing about it is, it is what it is. It's what you use it for. User responsibility comes into play on that, too. And me, myself, these brand pages, any of them that got the J360 production name, they belong to me, and they're going to be used for all the right reasons. And I ain't worried about the damn views. I'm just getting them out there. But you know what? That is enough for all y'all, I should say. Nah. Let me make let me make that other point. Like I said, use your freedom of choice. Don't follow a celebrity's statement. Listen to indie shows out there. Those that really matter. And the thing is, like, when it comes to relationships, oh, don't you worry, I got that ass in lockdown for the next episode to come along because guess what? This is Valentine's week, and I got plenty for you behind. But like I said before, there's so much more out of this stuff, and we can be better than what we are, and it's good to be back on J360 Radio. So try to aim for better, okay? Try to make some changes. It will really help out a lot. Other than that, though, this is J-Man signing off. You guys take it easy. Peace.